All right, my fellow creators, welcome back to Sonic Creations. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my first villain, Mecha Sonic, and what makes my version of him unique from all the other ones that you'll see, whether that be fan-made or official. Obviously, officially, the only Mecha Sonic we have is from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, where he was sort of this voiceless, you know, emotionless. I mean, there's nothing, there's no AI in him. He was just another Metal Sonic model that Eggman had built to go do whatever he needed to be done. But I decided that since that was one of his more intimidating and powerful versions of Metal Sonic, to bring that back in a modern way, and that alongside Eggman developing a new AI and putting those two things together could create a doomsday event. Now the reason I called it Sonic Doomsday is because, yes, it is a doomsday, like a city is destroyed and things are crazy, characters are killed, it feels like a doomsday event for the series, but it's also how Mecha Sonic views himself. So imagine this, you're this AI, you don't even really know you're an AI, yet you just wake up in a lab and immediately you connect to the internet and you see all these images of these horrible events of human history and they just are seemingly never ending all the crazy messed up things that are happening in our world and he sees all of this in the span of just seconds and then he meets his creator who is this evil scientist and so in those first few minutes of him being brought to life he is shown the absolute worst sides of humanity and the living proof of that is what's standing in front of him, his own creator. And so already he begins to have this nihilistic viewpoint towards Earth and its inhabitants, all of the humans and everything like that, and how they treat the planet, how they treat each other, how they treat the animals, how they treat Mobians even. He sees human life as this endless experience of suffering and hopelessness. It all leads him to believe that they are this disease of the planet. They are this species that needs to be wiped out and re started. He thinks of himself as the asteroid that crashed into the earth and destroyed the dinosaurs. He thinks of himself as I'm that next thing that is going to come along and create this doomsday event that is going to wipe the slate clean so that something new can be formed in its place. And he sees himself as the living proof as well that humanity is lost. The fact that they created him is already a massive failure on humanity's part. And the fact that people like Eggman exist and all the other people who are just egotistical, tyrannical, it shows him that maybe he is sort of needed and that this is destiny and that he was literally created so he could take matters into his own hands. He was given the power to do that and he believes that's for a reason. So he's such an advanced AI, he's already in this delusion and definitely mentally struggling with ideas of what he's experiencing, but his flaw is that he has no idea what it's like to be mortal. He has no idea what it's like to be human or anything like that. He is completely disconnected from that. But he doesn't think that that matters. And he doesn't think about that at all. All he sees is what he sees. You know, you can think of it a little bit as like maybe what an AI would do to us. If we were to create an AI, would they even want us around? Would they just come to some conclusion or some answer that we wouldn't even be able to comprehend and just decide we're done? You know, that's it. Pack your bags. Humanity's done. You know, this is something that is truly terrifying to think about. And and it could happen in real life. And I think that's partially what inspired me is hearing all the stories of AI getting better. And this was like years ago. Now it's it's at a whole other level and we're still heading towards that direction of like, we need to keep things in check with this AI or it'll just, it could in theory do very terrifying things to our world. And this was definitely like, I wanted this character to manifest that fear in his victims that you can't exactly argue with him. You can't throw anything at him that will change his mind. Mecha is just this AI who has already made its mind in the seconds that it was turned on. And there's no reversing that. So when he gets brought back in cybernetics, you can see why that's a terrifying prospect because he's gonna continue to try to achieve his goal of wiping out humanity. Now, of course, he's not doing this to be cruel. He's not doing this just for the sake of being evil. He's not doing this for any of those reasons. He really believes in what he's doing and that it needs to happen and that he is this doomsday event that just needs to happen. So with that delusion, 
and his power combined, it's a very bad thing, <laughs> putting it lightly, that he's back. Another thing that we've seen is that he very easily manipulated Eggman into thinking that he had some semblance of control over him and maybe he would fall in line, but of course it was all manipulation. He was tricking him into thinking that he was just going to follow orders and just tag along with whatever he wanted to do when meanwhile in his mind, his AI brain, he was thinking about all the ways that he's going to use these resources that Eggman has created to his own benefit to further his mission and to complete his goal. So anyone like that that has those kind of resources, he knows the whole story of pretty much every time Sonic has tried to stop Eggman. He understands that, okay, Sonic and his friends are gonna come try to stop me, so I'm gonna need an army. And so that's why he takes advantage of what Eggman was building up for his own plan and then just uses that for his plan. And so that was sort of the idea for Doomsday was like very scary situation where Eggman creates something that he just is absolutely out of his depth about, you know, this AI that he didn't even know what he was making until it was too late. He didn't even know what he had created because what he created wouldn't even admit what he was to his own creator. So, of course, Eggman couldn't have fully anticipated it, of course, he got little hints and ideas like, oh, you know, he's sounding a little negative, he's sounding a little weird, we had this conversation, you know, he's like talking to Mechasonic, he's sort of living with him for a little bit and testing him and, and, and so far things are great, but something's off and, it, you know, and this paranoia, and we see this in the last episode of Cybernetics, this paranoia takes over Eggman. He's completely lost his mind. And you know, Eggman doesn't ever really have too much time to think about it. He's building an army, he's like building all these ships, making sure that his base on the moon is built and all that kind of stuff. Like he's managing a lot of projects leading up to Doomsday. But with the little downtime that he has, and when he's just walking around his secret base on the egg carrier that's been abandoned for like decades, this old, rusted, overgrown by nature egg carrier, <laughs> It's, it's such a dingy and dark environment, and he sort of just starts to lose his mind with paranoia, and I just, I really wanted to emphasize that, because I didn't really get the chance to show that stuff in Doomsday, and so it was really cool to finally get the chance to show that side of Eggman, and like, that building Mechasonic was not just this super easy thing, it was done over quite a long period of time, about like a third of a year, more or less, and so in those hundred days or so leading up to Doomsday, the, the stress and paranoia just builds up and builds up, but it's not enough for him to think that he needs to shut it down. But even if it was, could he even shut Mechasonic down? The answer is no. Mechasonic would not allow that to happen. He has created something that is so powerful and almighty and is fully integrated into his systems, there is no shutting it down. Unless he just gets lucky and it complies, right? but it's not going to do that. I mean, even lying to Mechasonic, Mechasonic is so smart, he can sense when Eggman is lying based on his heart rate and all these kinds of things. There's no tricking Mechasonic, there's no getting inside his head and twisting things around or manipulating him. He is the ultimate manipulator. He knows everyone's history, all the characters, you know, and especially Shadow, which is why he uses Shadow's backstory being this laboratory experiment, not really having a say, just being created in this lab and then befriending Maria and losing her and like what good have the humans done? Like he uses this against him, but it's also something that Mechasonic genuinely feels. He actually feels that he has some sort of deep connection with Shadow because of their similarities of the things that they've experienced um, and how they were created. It's actually very similar that Gerald Robotnik, with the help of Black Doom, of course, created Shadow, and he created something he didn't even fully understand, its full capabilities and powers, and the same thing happened with Eggman, who is Gerald's grandson, when he created Mechasonic, and so there's just that connection, but it's kind of left up to interpretation of Mechasonic is actually being genuine with Shadow and saying, hey, come join my side because what have they done for you anyway? We're more powerful together. Or if he's really just afraid of Shadow going against him because he thinks that, I don't know, maybe Shadow is strong enough to defeat me. And so it's kind of a little bit of both in my eyes, but I definitely left that up to interpretation in Doomsday. I think it was particularly episode two that that conversation happened where he brought up like, hey, why don't, why don't you join me? Like, you know, what 
what have these humans ever done for you? They're using you. They just want your powers. And if you didn't have those powers, if you were just some useless Mobian who didn't do anything, you know, they wouldn't want anything to do with you. Like you're their project. You're their weapon. And so the idea of being this used weapon is also what he's constantly throwing at Shadow or anyone like Shadow as a way to manipulate them to get on his side. But of course, he'd probably kill them if, if he felt that he needed to, if it better served reaching his goal. He's just someone who is caught in so much raw negativity that is constantly being pumped into him from the internet, from the news. It's all this negative things that are filling his brain and he has no positive positive experience of humans. He has nothing. And the humans that are innocent and they're just going about their lives, he's like, well, what is that? They're just going about their lives and then they die. Like, what an existence. Like, something better can be happening there. You know, like, what do they, what purpose do they even serve? They let all these corrupt and evil people rule them. Well, then they're just as useless and just as bad. You know, he, the way he justifies things is just completely wild and so negative and nihilistic. And that's what I really wanted to to do with his character and why his character is so terrifying. So yeah, I just feel like I didn't really have enough time to explain Mechasonic in the actual arc where he is the main villain, uh, which is definitely a mistake on my part. And when I look back at Doomsday, I see a lot of those flaws where I'm like, I wish I could just go in and fill in a lot of those empty gaps where I feel like something should have been there. You know, there should have been more story to explain more things and there should have been more character interactions. It should have just been better animated and voice acted with better equipment. But of course, I just... <laughs> I started Doomsday just so on a whim, you know, just, oh yeah, I could just animate some story and Gmod and see how that turns out. I didn't really think about where it would end up or that I'd want to continue the story or anything like that. At least I can make discussion videos like this and sort of go into things a little bit deeper and, and give you guys a little bit more information about what is going on, a little bit more perspective from the characters themselves and, and what my intentions were with the story. So yeah, Eggman dies by the hand of his own creation and something that can outsmart the smartest man alive really is the most terrifying thing. And so if he can outsmart Eggman, he can outsmart Tails, he can outsmart anyone. You know, he's he's the ultimate master manipulating machine. And he's also physically speaking way above everyone else as well. So he is quite the formidable foe. And I'm happy to say that he's going to be back. Now, not as a main villain, to be clear, he's more of a side villain now, but he definitely has main villain energy. He is going to appear in episode five of Sonic Cybernetics, which is the second to last episode of Sonic Cybernetics until we get to Sonic Aftermath, which it will continue, and Mechasonic will also be in Aftermath. With that being said, I hope you guys are looking forward to episode five. I'm gonna be posting the first scene of the episode, which is about four minutes and 30 seconds or so, and then, uh, but then after that, you guys are gonna have to wait for the rest of the episode. I'm just gonna release that first scene because I'm really proud of it and I want you guys to have something while you're waiting for the full episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video, creators. Peace out.